Hello, and thanks for joining us today. I'm really glad you could be here. So how do you really achieve financial freedom? Well, it's something we all want, we're all pursuing, but we kind of need the path, the roadmap, or say the shortcut to be able to get it if there is one. And that's exactly what we're going to be diving into today, decoding. And with us today is Ty Morgan. Now, he's the founder of Infinite Planning, where his goal is to educate and inspire individuals to take control of their financial lives through proper education and coaching methods. Now, Ty has also recently founded the nonprofit organization silent guardian angels incorporated and he is here today to share his and his family's incredible story of overcoming incredible odds and how financial freedom allowed that possibility ty thanks for joining us today yeah absolutely ty it's a pleasure to be here and that's a great name by the way and i'm excited to share with your audience um, what we have to offer so i um, thankful for the opportunity yeah i'm glad you're here man i think you're one of the only ties i've ever interviewed before there's not too many of us out here floating around yeah, it's a great name. It's, it should be worn with a badge of honor. Though. It should be. I have to ask you a question. I always get asked. So is it short for something? It's short for Tyler. It is. Uh, see, I'm, I'm a tie. I'm just a tie. But almost everybody I've met is all – I think everybody I've met is, is a Tyler Tyson, Tyford, Tyland, or some variant. Yeah, growing up, there was about five or six Tylers um, around the same grade I was in. I said, I got to be different, so I went with Ty. So it's, uh, you started out great, and I had to migrate to the greatness. It was a smart move. My, my parents just wanted to give me something I could spell. They figured two letters, and you can't make it much more simpler than that. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so what's up, Vince? Tell me a little bit about your story, because you've really overcome you know, substantial odds to get to where you are. Yeah, absolutely. So Infinite Planning was the, the first company that I created. And um, I created that because um, I have my master's in personal finance, something I'm really passionate about. And I went to the University of Alabama to study it. And um, what inspired me to actually start Infinite Planning was my grandfather. Um, so at the age of 64, my grandfather was still uh, physically working for money and he suffered a pretty significant injury. And um, what occurred there is he was cutting down pine trees in Alabama, as he'd always done growing up, as he was a logger. And the pine tree caught him in the left temple and left him severely injured and impacted for now for the remainder of his life. So if there was any way, you know, I could go out and inspire other families to take control of their financial lives, I knew that I was going to do that. And then along the journey of starting Infinite Planning, my wife and I had our second child um, on the way. And Brayson, after three months of being in utero, was diagnosed with bilateral renal agenesis. And that means that he had complete absence of kidneys in his bladder. And when we got that um, diagnosis on that faithful day, September 29th, 2020, we were only given two options. Uh, option number one was to abort. Option number two was to carry Brayson full term and he would be stillborn. Uh, but my wife and I, we didn't like either one of those options. So we went with option three. And we found a clinical trial and moved to Baltimore, Maryland for 10 months to save our son. How'd that work out? Yeah. So it's going really well. Um, I guess I can kind of spin it into to two, two categories. Number one, I'm thankful I started my business and started working on that. And it bought me the financial freedom and the time I needed to help my wife go through this journey to save our son. And then our son, um, he spent a total of 225 days in the NICU. And he went on, underwent 14 total surgeries. And my wife, to get him born, had 25 procedures um, to help out his lungs to grow um, in, in, in utero. So we've gone through quite a bit in the last 10 months. But on her birthday, September 3rd, 2021, our son came home. He's been home since then, and he's he's getting stronger every day. So he's been a blessing to us. That's awesome, man. That's like a couple months ago. So congratulations. Absolutely. We appreciate it. So what have you learned along the way? I mean, um, you know, you've had to be in a position where financially you could carry yourself through this. So what does financial freedom mean to you? And what do you see financial freedom mean to a lot of the clients that you're coaching and helping? Yeah, absolutely. So, so before I started my, my business, um, like I said, I got my master's in personal finance. And I didn't want to go work at the Edward Jones of the world or these other financial firms. It just didn't fit, you know, what I wanted to do. And so I got a corporate job and I was working as um, a district manager um, running businesses. And so with that, you trade your time for money. So I was clocking in doing the nine to five. And obviously I, I was limited on my time and what I could do with it. And so over that, that period of three years of being in the corporate world, I knew if I wanted to control my time, I needed to be a business owner and control the, the cash flow in my life. And so I made that transition personally myself over, over a year of studying and, and continual development. I still continue to learn every day now. 
Um, but the most important thing that I learned across that journey is something called the infinite banking concept. And that is basically learning the banking function and applying it at the me and you level. And I learned that the key to that was your imagination. So there's a way for individuals and business owners to take over the banking function in their life and control that. So that's been kind of kind of what I have learned myself personally, and then also now I teach the clients. So how do you use infinite banking to be able to create financial freedom? Yeah, so what, what you can do with it is it actually you're building up a capital pool. So you're taking your money and you're building up a capital pool over a period of time. And you're able to leverage your own dollars and use those um, for your business needs, for your investments, um, whatever you see fit. And then you recoup interest instead of the banks profiting off interest. So at, at the end of the day, banks are, are professionals at lending money. And so you need to study the banks and become the bank yourself. When you're helping clients and coaching the way that you do, why do you find financial freedom so elusive? I mean, we all throw this around. It's just almost a term that you know, nobody accomplishes, but everybody uses. But so few ever really get to a point where they're financially free. So what do you see as the obstacle with all your knowledge, experience through college and in real life of, of why people don't reach this goal? Right. So number one, it's going to require the right mindset. And so a lot of people, I think, struggle to get in that right mindset. It's it, it takes quite a bit um, to get in the mindset. But once you get in the mindset, then it's going to require action. When I, when I say action, I'm not talking like the corporate job I had nine to five working 80 hours a week. I'm saying strategically thinking about what you want out of your life and what you want to do with your time to produce, produce the results that you need. Um, so a lot of people, I think, struggle to even set goals. Uh, and I think that's kind of a lot of the problem in, in people's personal finance. You know, if you don't know how to set a, a, set a goal, you can't go achieve things. So I think that's kind of kind of the big thing. Number one is going to be mindset. So people either don't know how or they don't know why to get in that right mindset. And then number two, taking the proper action and not wasting their time. You know, I saw this thing that from your information out there called the Austrian School of Economics. What do what have you what do you have to tell me about that? And how that can help along the way of financial freedom. Yeah, so number three, uh, uh, there's three different types of economic schools of thoughts. And so the Austrian school is one that uh, very few probably talk about, but it's truly believing in a free market. Um, so they don't want any government intervention. They want businesses to flow and have a free market system. And the other two, uh, number one would be a Keynesian. That's what the economy is actually currently on. I think it was Michael uh, Keynes back in the 1930s and 1936 is when he came out with his theory. And he basically um, believes through his theory that the government should always intervene and inject money into the economies to keep it going and stimulate it. Then also on the other side, they're semi free market. They're called the Chicago school of economy. And they say they're free market, but they still will allow, you know, government intervention. But then in the Austrian school of economics, they don't believe in any intervention and the business um, will drive that market. Mm, and so why, why, so why that's important with a free market is I think right now we could kind of talk about uh, the debt of the U.S. economy. So if we were to take a look at the U.S. economy, we're about 28 to 29 trillion in debt and our GDP, which is what the total U.S. economy would produce is at 22. So we're at about a negative six to negative six trillion dollar uh, deficit. And the only way the U.S. government can pay those back is through taxes. And so why that's important is if we had a free market, this probably wouldn't occur, but because we're operating under, you know, manipulated market, we run up these large deficits. And then now the only way for the government to pay back those deficits is going to be through consumers being taxed. Um, and, and so that's, that's kind of one important reason and why we studied the Austrian school and want to want a free market and why it's beneficial. You know, one of the, the drawbacks of all the spending, obviously, is inflation. So is it possible? Is there a way to kind of inflation proof your life, per se? Yeah, absolutely. And so um, we teach with the infinite banking concept um, to leverage your own dollars and go acquire assets that are going to help uh, fight inflation. Um, and we don't make investment advice, but things that help fight inflation are going to be real estate investments, uh, you know, potentially Bitcoin, gold, silver, actually hard assets that you own and or businesses. Because in a business, you know, you can increase your prices on your products, goods and or services. Um, so that's why it's really important. And, and being an employee, it's you can't really uh, control that. That's why it's good to have those, those investments and or business assets. 
What have you found with financial planning? What are some tips that you'd suggest for entrepreneurs out there to follow that are mistakes that you see, you know, a lot of your, your clients actually are making? Yeah. Yeah. So for, for clients that I've, I've dealt with, um, they're more particular into the agricultural side of the business. And uh, this might not be too common, but uh, what I've noticed is a lot of people aren't even tracking their finances. Um, so whether their CPA was keeping their books or they even had their books. So for example, one client I had for 15 years has been in business and they never even knew uh, what, what their projections were, their revenues were going to be, and they had never reviewed the year prior. So it's always just good to take a step back and look at where you have been and where you want to go and actually take a look and sit down at your financials. You know, I have this interesting conversation with a lot of my friends and the question really comes down to, well, let me give you an example with mortgages. Mortgage interest rates are really low. My friends are refinancing for two or 3%, right? And the question becomes, and several of them have brought this up to me, should I take cash out and invest? Because I can obviously make more than a two or 3% return. Or, you know, am I hyper-focused on paying the mortgage off and owning it free and clear? What do you think? What's your, what's your, what's your interpretation of that? Which is better? Is it better to get money out and invest it in places like whole life or other things where you can get a greater rate of return? Or is it really the run to pay off all of your debt and eliminate car loans, mortgages, and all have that sitting there where that money's not being used for you, but at least it's not money that's cost you. What's your, what's your view on that? Ty, I'm actually glad you brought that up. Uh, so this is very situational. So there's no cookie cutter approach, but from my perspective and what I believe in, I believe in that your house from, you know, rich dad, poor dad, your house can never be an asset. It's always a liability. So I believe if you can take the equity out and if you know what to do with that money, go do with that money. But if you're someone you're uh, always going to, you're not going to invest the money. You're just going to blow it. I would say that's, that's bad advice. Don't, don't take the money out. And when you're, when you're looking at the, the interest rates, I think a lot of times that's the distraction. Um, so a lot of people can get distracted by interest rates. It's not the necessary interest rate. It's the volume of interest you're paying out to other entities. Um, so for example, there's no such thing as a 0% car loan. Uh, you, you pay, you're going to pay your interest in that car loan the first two to three years. And if you go to trade it in, you're going to see that the value of your car um, is significantly lower than the amount you owe on that car. And so um, that's, that's kind of just a big component that we teach on uh, too with the infinite banking concept. It's taking back over, you know, that financing in your life. So if you wanted to go take your infinite banking concept policy and you wanted to fund your car and take over your mortgage policy, you could do so and recoup that interest. Um, so that would be an option as well. Hmm. So there's no really one answer. It just depends on what you're doing with the money, um, whether or not you're reinvesting and what kind of returns you're getting, all those kind of things. What, is there a better way that you think, should you focus on living a debt-free life? I mean, is that a goal that you should really be focused on? Is this paying off all of your debt? Is that something that you think is a smart move? No. So there's, there's two different ways to look at, at debt. There's, um, Debt is not a good thing or a bad thing. It just is. Um, so with debt, I'll compare it to like a chef with fire. Okay. So if you have fire to light a stove and you have a chef, it's going to cook a fantastic meal. It's going to look great. But if you have a wildfire and it's out of control, then it's going to burn up the forest. So the same thing with debt. If you know what to do with the debt and you can apply it to business and or investments and recoup money on that, then you should utilize debt to buy your freedom. So debt can actually lead some people to financial freedom. Now, for example, in real estate, you're going to take on debt to acquire real estate unless you're sitting on a lot of cash, especially in commercial spaces. Uh, but th that's debt that you're going to acquire that's going to cash flow money back to you because the investment in that property is going to yield you a return. Hmm. I like that. I think that's really a smart way of looking at it because, you know, a lot of people are trying to figure this out right now with rates being so low and you got a limited window before rates start going up. I think with inflation is going to drive a lot of those things up. And a lot of, I think what you're saying comes back down to goals. So how do you go about setting your financial goals? How do you kind of figure out and get lost? Because as you said, everybody has different philosophy on this. I mean, you know, other people, one people say, person says, 
take the equity out of your house, invest it in smart investments. The other ones like pay off all the debt that you have. No right or wrong, subjective depends on the universal or the individual situation. But one thing's for sure, you know, which way you go in those kind of decisions depends on the kind of goals that you have. So what do you do with helping your clients really figure out financial goals and what kind of financial goals should you establish that you can start working backwards from to kind of make those decisions wisely? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So, um, I, and I, I use smart goals. Uh, I'm going to be transparent. I think every, everyone in America knows what smart goals are You're just about. So you sit down and, and you make your smart goals and you, you align those. And really, instead of um, just saying there's, I do have a process that I follow, but it's specific to that client. So if I was to work with someone that had a corporate job working at nine to five, if they want to go debt free, then we'll, we'll align that strategy, to help them assist going debt free with their corporate job. But say we have a business owner, and they want to expand their business holdings, then we're going to map it to meet that. And that's what I prefer because uh, there's nothing wrong with the, you know, the corporate employer, the employee working the nine to five. Obviously, we need that in business. You got to have employees. But if you're a business owner, um, you, you need to know how you're going to have capital in the future and to grow your business. And uh, had some really fun projects that, been, that we have been working on and helping a business owner expand from not only just having his business revenue, um, we looked at his numbers and we found there was uh, an area where he could invest in real estate also. That would be a surplus cash flow for him as well. What about recurring income? I mean, whenever I hear infinite banking, I immediately think about recurring income. How important is recurring income, you think, for somebody that's trying to reach financial freedom? Yeah, I think for me, like I said in the beginning, the time is the most important thing. So recurring recurring revenue should always be everyone's goal. Uh, I don't like to use the word actually retirement because retirement means to be put out of commission. I don't ever want to be put out of commission. So what we need to do is over time is build cash flowing assets that are going to send us recurring revenue that don't require us to expend our time to make that money. Um, so I think that should be everyone's number one priority goal if you truly want to reach financial freedom. Because there's reaching financial freedom is not going to clock in every day, placing money into a 401k in the stock market and just hoping it goes up. That's not a strategy at all. Uh, so I'm going to lean, lean harder to definitely building the recurring revenue basis. What do you think the habits are to be able to reach financial freedom or to even really get your set up, get yourself set up where you're able to start putting aside money to then, you know, invest it in the right places to be able to create financial freedom? Yeah, so um, I can kind of speak from my own personal uh, personal journey for that. Uh, coming out of college, they teach you and they kind of train you, I think, through high school, college. The school setting is to kind of train you to be an employee. And so I thought if I just put all my money in 401k, go clock in and kind of hope I was going to build up this nest egg over time and be able to walk away. And uh, I would eventually just be able to do something different. It just wasn't the case. I kept lying to myself. So I had to look myself in the mirror and be honest with myself and said that I need to take action and take action today. So instead of waiting, I would definitely recommend people take action as soon as possible. And you don't have to, you don't have to have $100,000, $200,000 to start. You can start today with what you have, think strategically and use your imagination and create your own financial freedom. And everyone's financial freedom is going to be defined differently. You know, if you want to move to Mexico and live in a cot and have a boat, it's not going to cost you as much if you want to go live downtown Tampa and uh, live in, in the condo and high rise. So it's just mapping out what you want to do and, and then taking action to go achieve those goals. Um, that's, that's the biggest thing is uh, taking action for sure. So the biggest thing is to be able to set the goals and then take action to be able to reach them. Absolutely. What are some of the biggest mistakes that you see entrepreneurs make that are trying to reach financial freedom, but end up blowing the whole thing or messing it up? I can't say I've seen anyone uh, blow it yet. Uh, I, I can't speak to that. Uh, I, I mean, I haven't seen anyone blow it. I mean, I see some bad habits that I'm trying to coach out of people. For example, there's, there's some clients that they're on the right track, but we could, be, we could be there quicker if there were certain personal lifestyle habits and choices that were discontinued. Um, for example, you know, I would say people that you know, like to go to the casino or you know, gamble and different things like that without a strategy that's not you know, technically advised. So that's just one thing I've seen, but I haven't seen anybody personally fail. So I can't speak to that. And actually, I think my take, my take on failure is entrepreneur as an entrepreneur, if you're not failing, you're not growing. So I guess 
people fail every day. It's kind of like lifting weights. You, you go till you fail and that's how you grow your muscles. So as an entrepreneur, you're just failing forward every day. And that's kind of my take on it. So, I mean, every day I fail, I may fail to get a task done, but then tomorrow I'm going to get that task done in three more. Um, but as far as like seeing an actual entrepreneur fail, I haven't seen one like fall and lose their business or anything in that nature. Have you seen, do you think that businesses that are, you know, doing the right thing, they've got profit margins, they've got retained earnings, should they be investing in those retained earnings? And do you think that um, infinite banking is a solution to do so like whole life and those kind of solutions? I absolutely hundred percent with everything in my being, I saw operate my companies and I absolutely would advise anyone that has a company with retained earnings to place their money into whole life insurance. And in our individual coaching sessions, if you'd like to find out a little bit more, we can definitely show you, uh, show you why that's important because your money is not safe in the actual banking system. Uh, it's something called the federal reserve. Uh, and say you place a uh, hundred thousand dollars in their, their, in your bank account. Uh, they can go loan out a million dollars off of your $100,000. So money is created out of thin air. And, uh, and then just another example of that $100,000, if you wanted to go take you know, your $100,000 out, you're probably not going to be able to do so with the bank. Uh, they have lent that money out and it's been accounted for in their system. And they're going to maybe allow you to withdraw 10000 that day, if that right now in the current economic environment. And why I would say to put that money into a whole life insurance policy that's designed the infinite banking concept way is because we're going to design that to put your retained earnings into an, a financial instrument that's been around longer than banks. Whole life has been around longer than banks. And it's also going to be guaranteed growth and you can access it up to 100% of the funds at any time without any penalties and or um, fees that a bank could potentially have. Can you access that money as soon as you put it in or is there a time period after you do that you can yeah, immediately um, you you can put your your cash in your so there's two portions to it. There's a premium portion and a paid up additions, which is referred to as the cash. As soon as you fund it, you can you you have you have rights to that money. What are all some of, of the bad habits that you've seen entrepreneurs have that, if fixed, can kind of help them reach financial freedom faster? Yeah, I think uh, what I've seen is you need to surround yourself with a team. So. And maybe sometimes people don't have that self-awareness to realize the team that's not around them. Uh, but for example, the, one of the most expensive things people pay in life is called taxes. And if your CPA is not helping you mitigate and or find strategies to reduce taxes, I would definitely find a new CPA um, because taxes are an all-time low currently. But like I stated earlier in this uh, recording, um, the only way the government is going to be able to make up those losses is to increase taxes. So I would definitely find and align with a CPA that's going to help you with your taxes over time. And um, that's just a mistake there that I've seen some entrepreneurs make, make not having their proper CPA uh, legal team kind of in place to help them through their journey. Who else do we need? Well, what other financial people or should we have in our corner? Yeah, so you're, you're going to want, you know, a CPA, uh, a lawyer, depending on what type of business you're in. Um, and then also... I would definitely recommend an infinite banking advisor to help coach you through that and teach you the banking functions in business. And, uh, and banker, I would say you do need a banker on your team. And so the reason behind that is obviously we don't want to store our money, our capital in banks, but banks are in the business of lending money. So, and to grow a business, you're going to need capital. So it might be good to have a banker friend uh, in your corner. Makes perfect sense. Uh, Ty, really good stuff today. Where can everybody go that's listening and watching to be able to learn more and talk to you guys, even jump on a consultation, as you mentioned earlier? Yeah, absolutely. So you can go to infiniteplanning.org and you can schedule a call with me and the team. And uh, I'll kind of revert back to, to my story with my son as well and the nonprofit that we found at Silent Guardian Angels. Um, anything I do with Infinite Planning right now, currently, I'm donating 50% of that revenue to Silent Guardian Angels as well. And what we're doing with that new nonprofit entity is we're developing a new peritoneal dialysis catheter um, for children like my son to reduce uh, occlusions, which means the catheter being stopped up because 14 of the surgeries um, that occurred, we believe about seven to eight of those could have been prevented if that peritoneal dialysis catheter worked properly. So we created this new nonprofit entity um, to help to help future children and uh, create a new, new uh, uh, peritoneal dialysis catheter for them. And to reach us there, that is silentguardianangels.com. Awesome. Thanks for coming, Ty. I really appreciate it. 
Yes. Thank you so much, Ty. Appreciate and it. And good luck with, with, you know, having your son home and, and watching him progress. Like, congratulations, on that. It's really exciting. Yes, absolutely. That is uh, like five or six and eight billion. So there's only a handful of children alive with this condition and we're the, the first round of it. And so that's been a blessing. And um, he, he has taught us a lot. That's awesome, man. Congratulations. Um, so everybody listening, watching, look, we all want financial freedom, right? And, you know, what Ty's done in what, what he does with his firm, the same as infinite banking and his strategies on building recurring income, on avoiding the habits that kind of entrepreneurs get trapped in that prevent them from having the financial freedom they want. He can help remove all those barriers. So if you want to talk to him more, it's free consultation to talk with him and his team. You can go to infiniteplanning.org. That's infiniteplanning.org. Don't forget, a large chunk of any business that you do with him is donated to a really, really good cause through Silent Guardian Angels. So make sure if you want to learn more, you go to infiniteplanning.org and put yourself on the right path to be able to reach your financial freedom, to be able to set your financial goals and be able to accomplish those uh, by avoiding the pitfalls, the habits, uh, the problems that so many people run into where they never really reach that level that they really want to reach. So make sure you go to infiniteplanning.org, set up a time to talk more and be well on your way to achieve financial freedom in a record amount of time. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.